Hey, what is everyone? I'm Rathal, and today I am bringing you my 1K special. I know it's been it's been almost a month since I posted anything. I am truly sorry for this unexplained hiatus. I've just been busy with work and other stuff, but now we are back making more videos. So this what if, it's not really a what if, it's more like a, well, it is a, a, a kind of a what if, but it's also like a, a rewrite, a rewrite that I wanted to make. Like, you know, a fan, a fan story kind of. So everything up until the cell games, after the cell games, that all stays the same. Anything after, like, Anything for the Boo Saga or afterwards, everything is rewritten. Like I, I changed a bunch of stuff, so there's gonna be differences in in character origin and power scaling and you know themes in the show. Like I'm trying to mix up like stuff from Super and GT into Z, giving like a little story before it shows up. Like I, I'm trying like this, like you know, cool. But basically, this this what if is kind of like if Dragon Ball had like a, a next generation after the Cell games, because originally. After the Cell Games, the main character was going to be Gohan, but they brought like back Goku because who doesn't like Goku? Basically, what I'm calling this little this little fan story I make I made, I wrote Dragon Ball Next Generation. I know, very original. Thank you. Um, I guess my main goal is like maybe one day have this as like an actual like a little manga, but I can't really draw, so like I would have to find an artist if if they're like if I just hope that this story for y'all y'all find it interesting. I only wrote the first three chapters of this. This covers like what everyone did, you know, like just the beginning. This a mixture of new characters some some characters i just created and i just really want to like dive in like a story in dragon ball where most of the main cast that we know and love passes on the torch to new characters so we get a new group of z fighters to face the threats like boo you know beerus frieza coming back maybe i don't know I, I, i'm still in the boo saga basically that's what this is all about so i hope y'all interested and i hope y'all enjoy this story so grab a snack listen to the listen to this during the background while you do something else but let me know what you think about the story yeah it's just it's just me reading this so you can just listen to this while doing something else but if you enjoy you know let me know what you like what you think about what you think about the story if i should continue it i me writing this, I feel like this is really good. But anyways, let's just let's just get into it. This is like ten pages long, so it's gonna be a bit. But yeah, let's just let's just go, cause I I'm excited to read this. It has been twenty years since the events of the Cell Games. The Earth has been at peace ever since, but at a great cost. The Earth's best defender, Goku, has been dead ever since. Once Gohan defeated Cell, everyone tried to wish Goku back, but he refused to and stated that it would be best if he remained dead in order to keep the planet safe. Some couldn't accept his decision, like Vegeta and Krillin, but others didn't understand the choice. Gohan felt guilty, blaming himself for it, but decided that the Earth still needed a protector, and that he would take his father's place to defend the planet. Vegeta was too affected by this, and promised himself that he would never fight again. Years would pass, as Gohan would go to school, but also continue his training on his own, to be prepared for any future threats to come. Even training the lights of his younger brother, Goten, and trunks. 20 years has passed since the Cell game. Gohan had a wife named Adele and a daughter named Pan. At the age of 10, she showed remarkable potential, similar to how Gohan was when he was younger. He would decide to train her little by little. Videl was questionable about training their kid so harshly, but Gohan knew that Pan would be an amazing fighter. He finally got how his father felt when he wanted to train him to fight Cell. The feeling still stayed in Gohan's heart after all these years. He wished that he could go back and change how he acted, if it would save his father. Gohan would be training in his Super Saiyan 2 form that he has perfected. He hears a voice call out for his name as he sees his daughter and his old gi he wore back when he first trained under Piccolo. He does think of his two himself what has everyone has been up to since he hasn't heard from anyone in a long while even barely keeping touch with his with goten and chi chi after leaving to live with videl until his thoughts are broken by a sudden sparring match with pan next generation and a deserted wasteland clashes and explosion can be heard as a fight has broken out quick movements and pressure waves are felt all over and adult goten and trunks in their 20s are revealed to be training both in their super saiyan state the fight is almost equal but trunks is slightly more powerful gaining the edge towards Goten and knocking him flat on the floor as they power down to base. You're cheating again, said Goten. Or you're just a sore loser, replied Trunks. Both laugh it off and then pawn to each other, saying if it's worth always training. Goten believes that the world may be at peace for good, but Trunks doesn't believe so, always making sure to push Goten and to keep up with their training. Trunks didn't like how Goten was so lighthearted all the time, but he does think about how they both grew up differently. With Goten, he had Gohan while he was up around 8 years old until Gohan left and barely kept in touch with him and his family, but Goten did have his mother. Goten stopped training and focused on school for his mother's sake. He also kept the look of his father, really resembling him. Goten's family life was mostly peaceful, 
Meanwhile, for Trunks, things were getting different. Trunks didn't spend much time with his dad for a good few years. After his younger sister, Bola, was born, his father, Vegeta, really didn't really grew distance from his family. This caused many arguments between him and Bulma. The argument always seemed to have had Goku involved after his death. One day, back when Trunks was still a kid, he asked Vegeta to train him once, since Gohan stopped training him. This caused Vegeta to lash out on Trunks, which ended up making Trunks leave. He flew out to a mountain area watching the stars, thinking about what to do. Gohan had told him that he had a big responsibility to be the protectors of Earth. For a good while, he stayed there pondering until he decided that he would have to train himself, which he did for a year. Even after all that, he didn't feel much stronger, until he went up to Goten and started training with him once again. They grew stronger together. They rivaled with each other for years, and they saw amazing growth together. They would even train Bola when she grew old enough, mainly to get her away from the constant argument between their parents. Trunks thought he was the only one taking it seriously, 100%, like Goten wasn't, which he disliked but couldn't blame him. It has been 20 years since any dangerous enemy has came to Earth. Slowly, Trunks thought the same but forced himself not to. They each would head back home. Once again, once Trunks arrived back, he instantly heard more arguments between his parents, mainly arguing how Vegeta isn't himself anymore as he doesn't fight nor train or even train his own kids. When they would ask him to, but Vegeta remained silent the entire time. Trunks would bury the yells with headphones listening to music as he tries to fall asleep. Chapter 1 the peace ends. Gohan is spending the morning with his family as they are enjoying their breakfast, but in the corner of Gohan's eyes, he sees a key blast entering his window and causing a massive explosion. He manages to protect his family, but has taken significant damage in doing so. He flies them out of the house and looks around to see what attacked him until he spots a tall, pink, muscular man that resembles a demon and a much shorter, older man with greenish skin and an orange cloak. Seeing this potential threat, he puts his family behind him and asks questions to the unknown assailants. Gohan can tell that the smaller one isn't much of a fighter. He should be more worried of the demon-like foe. The smaller one introduces himself as Babidi, and the bigger one, Demon King Dabura. I'm here to collect energy from the strongest fighters in order to bring back the terrifying reincarnation of evil himself, Majin Buu. Gohan is a bit taken aback, not too sure what he should do. Then Dabura steps up, preparing to shoot another key blast. Gohan tells Videl and Pan to leave now as while he handles this threat. Their brawl begins as it seems that Gohan has had the edge in the battle with his fighting skills. He gives them a warning, truly sounding like his father many years ago. I'll give you a chance and leave this planet and to go back to whatever realm you came from and never return, said Gohan. The bro only laughed at this remark, replying with, I will show you why they call me the Demon King. As he powers up, and this shocks Gohan. The pressure from the energy pushes Gohan a bit. He is a bit worried, even in his Super Saiyan 2 state, he would not win, but he has no other option. Gohan powers up, his hair flaring into a bright yellow aura as lightning surrounds his body. He made a promise to be the protector of Earth, and he is not going to go back on his promise. Away, both Goten and Trunks senses the overwhelming power, one being Gohan, but the other one not being recognized. They know Gohan is in trouble, and both start to head to the direction of the battle. Before Trunks left, he was stopped by his younger sister, Bola. Can I come? But Trunks told her, it would be too dangerous for you to go. This clearly upset her, but it was the right thing to do. He saw his father before heading out, but Vegeta showed no reaction that he was going to aid them and Trunks scuffed at this. Back in the battlefield, Gohan is being tossed around like a doll, even at Super Saiyan 2. Gohan is struggling to fight Dabura. He is completely dumbfounded by the strength that the king of the demon realm is. He is nothing like Cell, and probably could have beaten him without a sweat. Suddenly, he feels the sharp pain of being slammed into the ground. He is angry with himself. After his training, the first time he is given the task to protect the planet, he is failing miserably. Gohan begins to get enraged, and powers up, which takes Dabura off guard. Gohan yells out loud, being overflowed with immense power and aura. The entire planet begins to shake from his power and causes abnormal disaster on the planet. It looks like he's going to destroy the planet with his power. The power Gohan is showing makes the bird almost blinded and being pushed back by the pressure until with one final bright light, the yelling finally ends. The bright light dissipates as the bird looks over to see Gohan, but he looks go when he looks, Gohan is different. His hair is longer, more electricity around him no eyebrows, and his body is a lot more bulkier. Gohan himself was quite shocked about this power. His body is bigger, so he will be slower, but he does have an increase in power that can overpower the Boro, but he is not too sure how long this body can handle this amount of strain. The battle continues with Gohan having the edge now, but Gohan can sense it. The longer this, the longer he uses this form, the more of his life energy fades, which, which gets him worried. He acts quickly, doing his best to end the fight as soon as possible. He gives a good head slam that sends the Boro crashing right into the ground. With all his force, Gohan uses a Masenko to aim at Dabura and blast him. Dabura had no time to react with the incoming attack and was completely eradicated. Gohan powers down, 
Somewhat shocked, he didn't accidentally destroy the planet. He then begins to cough off a lot of blood as his body begins to fall apart. He put too much strain with that amount of power. He looks over at Bobby with his eyes barely open as he sees him put up a portal. As he sees him open up a portal with a huge egg coming out of it, and then proceeds with injecting the egg with some sort of machine until the egg began to hatch. Pink smoke shooting out of it. He doesn't have much energy to get back up. He thinks this is it for him until he sees two sets of feet laying in front of him. He looks up to see Goten and Trunks as he passes out. Goten and Trunks stand there in front of Bobby and the egg, but aren't too sure what is going on. Goten sees his brother on the floor hurt and gets angry powering up into a super saiyan 2 transformation with trunks following then once they did the egg finally broke free as they saw a very skinny gray looking creature they both were unsettled by this amount of power as it was way stronger than the one they sensed earlier it took almost everything it had in them to not shake bobby grew in excitement demanding boots to kill them all but that happiness quickly grew into fear as he saw the hand of boot turn to him and without another moment boot shot a key blast that erased bobby and this act took both of the half saints to get into a fighting stance and rushed on the enemy. The first punch they threw at Boo, he caught them without effort and slammed both of them into the ground. He proceeded to throw them into the air and shot a big energy blast. With quick thinking, Goten grabbed the whole of Trunks and instant transmission them out of the way. Trunks thanks Goten, saying, It was smart to learn that technique from Master Krillin. I should have done the same. With Goten replying, Yeah, you should have, jackass. Together, they rushed Boo once again, but in a more coordinated fashion which they call the double savior combo. They attack Boo using their advantage in numbers, with one of them sending with one sending him flying into the air while the other would slam him back down and finish it off with a combined effort to create a huge Kamehameha wave as they both pull all their energy into it, charging it up and shooting it at Boo as Boo takes it full force. The two hybrids power down exhausted but cheer on but cheer each other on as their victory and saving the planet, both screaming, We did it, we did it as they burst into as they burst into laughter. But while Goten was still cheering, Trunks looks over to see the smoke as it begins to disappear to see the gray blob begins to regenerate as he tells Goten and their faces quickly loses its cheerfulness to see the monster they thought they defeated to come back completely unharmed. Even when they are tired, they power back into Super Saiyan and continue to fight against the threat. But it doesn't go out well as they were both being beat on terribly as Boo showed no mercy, but they do not give up as they keeping it back up to hold their own, but it isn't in their favor. Not one bit. Backup arrives. Gohan's eyes begin to open slowly as he sees shadowy figures right in front of him. As he instantly leaps backwards, not knowing what to expect. The small figures say, hey, no worries. We're here to help you. Let me introduce myself. I am the Supreme Kai, and this is Kabito. Gohan stands there, still on his guard, exclaiming, why are y'all here, and what is going on? The Supreme Kai proceeds to explain the entire story. Since the beginning of time, there was a manifestation of the embodiment of pure evil itself. He was a threat for millions of years that the Kai's had to deal with, while many has perished with the immense power of strength that Boo was given. The only way that Kai's the only way that the Kai's managed to defeat the threat was to trap it in an egg. But their first attempt left futile as Boo had so much magical and physical power that he was able to break himself free. So the Kai's had to rethink the plan. But one of them sent something in Boo. Boo had the spiritual energy of two beings, one overpowering the other. They were all shocked to learn that Boo had a good side that was suppressed by the evil side. So the Kai's then used all their power to split the two sides of Boo with the pure evil and the good side. After the split, Boo's power drastically went down, enough so that the Kai's were able to trap the evil side in the egg, but they were still left with the energy of the good side of Boo. There was a legend that the only way to destroy Boo was with Boo. The Kai's during the time believed that the good side of Boo would be the one to take out the evil side. So they had to think what could it have mean as the good side of Boo didn't have a physical body until they decided that maybe the good side would be reincarnated into something new. Once they let go of the spirit and went on to be reincarnated into different beings from around the world universe. The Kai's kept close eye on everybody it has been formed into, but for many years the Kai's never sensed any immense power from any of the beings until a few years ago. Supreme Kai proceeds to explain that they sense an intense power out of nowhere on earth. They went to see what it was, they already saw someone by the newborn child. They revealed it to be Son Goku. He has taken interest in the child and already had plans with it. Gohan is stunned to hear that even in the afterlife Goku is steps ahead to try to keep the planet in peace. Gohan asks what Goku did with the child, but even the Kai's are unsure about what he did with him. Gohan asks to speak with his father, but they rejected the request as Goku is currently in a plane further than themselves. The only thing that they say is that Goku grew so much stronger in the 20 years that he is in a new field of power. Gohan then spots overseeing both Goten and Trunks being beaten brutally by evil Boo. The Kai's warn him not to jump in without thinking, but Gohan doesn't waste time and then jumps in to help his pupils, powering to Super Saiyan 2, taking Boo's attention to him. The Kai's go to the half-breeds and heal them 
and once they recover, they try to join back into the fight. But Supreme Kai stops them, saying that they need to calm down. He tells them that he sends the world's strongest defenders are heading to their location and to help the fight. They are shocked as they haven't heard from any of them for years. The Kai's explained he senses nine different life energies, but then his son that one of the nine is the good half of Boo. He then thinks that it's their chance of eliminating Boo once and for all. His thoughts are cut off as Goten rushes off to help his brother fight Boo, which Trunks tries to follow, but Supreme Kai tells him that he should not go. It is too dangerous and it's the best to wait for the others so that they have a, so they have the advantage in numbers. Goten and Gohan together try to fight off Boo. Definitely isn't going well as Boo is still far superior. Gohan tries his best to transform into Super Saiyan 3, but he's not able to, which angers him. But when he wasn't paying attention, Boo sends a lethal beam that is aimed right at Gohan. He doesn't have much time to react, but then he is pushed away as Gohan takes the beam directly to the chest as he falls down into the floor. Gohan is shocked, left speechless. He quickly flies down to see his younger brother almost lifeless. The Kai and Trunks quickly rushes over to them, and the Kai tries to heal him, but it doesn't look too good. Seeing his brother almost dead, and because of him, Gohan begins to get angry once again. He yells out, but this is no rage boost to gain power, but a rage of extreme guilt, as his emotions kick in fully. Not the emotions of a Saiyan, but the emotions of a human. Boo begins to get bored and shoots a powerful key blast towards the group. As Trunks powers up, to prepare to defend it, but the attack is deflected by someone else. They all look over to see the caped Namekian Piccolo. He lands in front of Boo. Gohan tries to warn Piccolo saying that Boo is way too powerful for him, but Piccolo just laughs saying, you really think I was just sitting around for 20 years and not training? We go back around the beginning of the 20 years, Piccolo would train on his own and even kept an eye on Gohan. He to continue his training on his own, made him glad, but he did sense how Gohan felt and decided to keep some distance from him to recover on his own. But he also thought of how to get himself stronger, as he knows that it is not good to just rely on the power of the Saiyans to protect the planet, as now it is only Gohan. Piccolo did have a talk with Vegeta and learned that he is no longer going to be a fighter, nor train himself or his son, which shocks Piccolo. He also grew angry at him calling him selfish for his decision, telling him that he is letting his pride take it too far. When Piccolo left, he decided that he needed to do whatever he can to grow stronger, to be more of use in case of any future enemies. He heads to King Kai's place in order to learn the Kaioken, which he did quickly, but after that, there wasn't anything else for him to do over there. He then get the idea of going back to his home planet Namek to see if there's anything he can possibly do to become stronger. When he arrived, he spoke to the Grand Elder at the time, which was Mori. He asked him to be told about the history of his race. For around a year, Piccolo took the time to truly learn about his race, but there is this one story that is only to be taught of a legend. It's about a warrior Namekian who had gotten the power that matched the gods of their universe. This legend intrigued Piccolo as he wanted to achieve this form. But Mori said that no one even knows that the story is true. But Piccolo was motivated to achieve it. So he began training harshly with little to no rest. And the Namekians saw this and was left speechless as the other warrior Namekians would spar with Piccolo. Piccolo was able to fight all of them on his own with little to effort. Sadly, Piccolo didn't feel any stronger or different and was starting to get annoyed, but Mori stepped in and told Piccolo the truth. He knows how the form is achieved, but it could cost him his life. It could cost him his life if he isn't pure of heart. But Piccolo went on with it anyways. They summoned Paranga and made the wish. Then a bright light came crashing down on Piccolo. A painful scream is heard as Piccolo felt major pain, but it did not stop as he endured it until it stopped. And once Piccolo was visible, he looked and felt different. He was brighter, a different shade of green, emitting a yellow aura, and his power was enormous. His strength greatly surpassed that of Gohan when he was Super Saiyan 2 against Cell. The form was like that of a Super Saiyan. He grew stronger in his base, then this form would get stronger as well. Before leaving, Prana notified Piccolo that he is surprised Piccolo attained the form, even though he isn't fully poor, but also that the form isn't the true power that he has, that the form he has isn't the true power as there is something far greater, but is now locked up until he himself can achieve it. Piccolo will be training on Namek for more years, even train up the other Namekian warriors. Afterwards, he decided to head back to Earth, and saw all the chains on Earth, but decided to remain on the lookout with Dende, until he sensed the threat. Gohan is shocked to learn that Piccolo may have surpassed him, but once Piccolo transformed into his golden form, he can tell Piccolo is stronger, even in that new form that Gohan obtained. Piccolo began fighting Boo, and their battle created many shockwaves as they teleported around the area. The guys were impressed by this show of power, and see that they were evenly matched, but then Boo began using more of his power, and even the power of his magic, and completely changed the result of the battle. Piccolo was being pushed back. Piccolo grew upset. All my training will not be for nothing. Charged a special beam cannon, and instantly shot one, that hit Boo directly, but saw that he regenerated. And Piccolo sees that his opponent isn't ordinary and could be a big problem. Suddenly, everyone is distracted as Bulla and Pan arrive at the battlefield. Both Trunks and Gohan grew worried, telling them to leave immediately as this place is not safe. This moment of distraction, Boo took this chance to shoot a key blast through Piccolo's chest, which he took at full force. Piccolo coughs out blood and loses his form as he crashes to the floor. Bulla would rush at Boo, 
but he grabs her by the throat. Trunks will lose his sense of thinking to go rush Boo, but Boo sends a paralyzed beam which makes Trunks immobile and cannot save Bulla. Supreme Kai seeing how bad it is turning out, he acts quickly to grab a hold of both Gohan and Goten and tells Kabito to grab Piccolo as they teleport away from Earth. Boo grumbles as he looks upset about the Kai's running away. Pan seeing the people she knows being hurt, she gets enraged and manages to get a punch in on Boo, but it does not have any effect as he is about to shoot a keyblast at her. Then a destructo disc cuts both of his arms, which frees Bulla and describes Boo to let go of Trunks. They look over to see two men, one much taller than the other. They are the new masters of the Turtle and Crane School, Krillin and Tien, Earth's mightiest fighters. Trunks is glad to see Master Krillin, Chatu, and Tien, but quickly grabs both Bola and Pan away from Boo. He warns them that Boo is far too strong for them to deal with, and they need to get away from him. Krillin tells Trunks to take both Bola and Pan to the lookout. He explains that they may have arrangements with King Kai. Krillin explains that they will hold off Boo for as long as they can, and King Kai will tell you what you must do to help the two younger Saiyans and the Supreme Kai. And the Supreme Kai also has a plan with the fighters he took. Trunks is confused, but Krillin yells that he must go now, as Trunks doesn't question any further. Tien looks over to Krillin. You look nervous. Him replying, I would be lying if I said I wasn't. Tien continued, Yantra better hurry up with our students to bring them to the battlefield, as I'm not too sure how long we can manage without him. Krillin, Chiatsu, and Tien look at each other and simultaneously rush at Boo, attacking with precise attacks and combination that actually makes Boo to be pushed back by the three. Flashback years ago. It's been five years since the events of the Cell games. Tien, Yamcha, Krillin, Chiaotzu, and Master Roshi sit at the Kame house as they just spend time together until they hear a knock on the door. Krillin opens the door and falls down instantly as he cannot believe who is at the door. Everyone else looks over and falls down in shock to see Goku. They all ask him what is he doing here as Goku gives a little chuckle but quickly gets serious and explains in the future there will come a threat more powerful than anyone they have ever faced and there's only one person who can beat that threat. He's shown a young boy named Oob. He doesn't tell them everything but that Krillin needs to train him and the three of them must be the leaders for the next generation of fighters. And without another word, Goku leaves out of sight. Krillin and the others are shocked. Goku left it to them to train their only hope, even though they aren't the strongest on the planet. Master Roshi barges into the conversation. Goku has always had a reason for the things he does. If he believes that you three will be the best masters for the next generation, then y'all must put your faith in him. He did so much for us and the planet, and now it's our turn to pay him back for what he did for us. Yantra then talks about the planet that Goku came from after Namek and believes that they could go train there. Master Roshi likes the idea and says all four them should go and he will give Oob the beginning of his training. The Earthlings would head over to planet Yardrak and start their training on the planet. They each learn a different Yardrak technique with Krillin learning instant transmission, Tatsu with gigantification, Ken with cloning, and Yamcha with healing. They stayed there for almost three years. They grew exponentially in strength. When they were headed and they were ready to head back, Yamcha decided to stay longer and possibly learn to train more to see what else he can learn. Once the others head back, they went their separate ways. Krillin to train Oob and Tien and Tatsu to start their dojo and train others and grow in the train the crane school. With Krillin, when he started training Oob, he felt a lot more confident with all his learning in Yardrap that he taught Oob the instant transmission. But one thing that shocked Krillin is that Oob knew the Kaioken already. So Oob was quickly able to catch up to Krillin while using the Kaioken, but even then, when the training started, Oob showed crazy potential. Krillin thought to himself that Oob's potential is similar to Gohan's, and possibly even better. Soon, it was a battle between who would grow stronger. Oob would surpass Krillin, but Krillin would catch up and surpass him for a bit, but Oob would always come back. They would begin to form a close master and disciple bond, with Krillin telling all the adventures he had with Goku and saying how Oob reminds him of a young Goku. After five years, some sadness would come over to Krillin and Oob, as Master Roshi gives Krillin some news, saying, I spent all my time on Earth, and I believe it is my time. Krillin stands there in shock, beginning to tear up, denying Master Roshi to not go as he does not want to be alone. Master Roshi says, Silly boy, you aren't alone as you got Oob. I know the turtle school will live on with you and Oob. Before I go, I have this gift for you, Krillin. Master Roshi hands his staff and shell to Krillin, stating, You are the new master of the turtle school. With you, I trust the entire school. Krillin tears rolling down his face as he looks at the shell and staff as he looks back to see Roshi gone. Krillin smiles and says quietly, Thank you, master. I won't let you nor Goku down. Two more years would pass as Krillin and Oob continue their training as they both grown so much. This is year 15 out of the 20. Krillin and Uber are at the lookout, but they aren't the only ones there. Both Tien and Shaotu are also up there, but there's someone else. Actually, three more people. Tien brought his best disciple, and his twin daughters, Lily and Dandelion. After him and Krillin parted ways, he started his own dojo and gained a lot of students, but also started a family with Launch, and had kids pretty early on, as currently they are both seven at the time. They're both skilled fighters. They were born, one had blue hair, which was Lily, and the other one, 
blonde hair, which was they called dandelion. They couldn't believe it. Of course, their hair color did resemble the personality of Blanche when she would change hair colors, but also defined their strengths in their fight. Dandelion was much stronger than Lily, but she was overconfident and had a big, big ego. Meanwhile, Lily was more calm, skillful, trying to use her techniques rather than boost strength. Krillin was shocked to see that Tien with kids, but laughs stating that that he too has a kid almost the same age. He explained how he got with Android 18 and had a child too around their age. He trained her a few times, but 18 did train her more. Tien was glad to catch up with Krillin, but explained that how he wanted their students to spar every year to see how much they'd grown. And Krillin thinks it's a good idea. Oob would spar with Yuri, and then the twins. No doubt Oob was far stronger because of his special case. But the young Earthlings had their own strength. For the rest of the five years, every year Tien and Krillin's students would match up with each other, and even Mary would join in as well as Krillin and Tien and Chao Tzu continue beating on Boo. Tien asked if 18 and Mariner were going to join, but Krillin asked them to stay put, as they did not know how strong this threat was. Boo started to get irritated, powering up, and began to shoot key blasts everywhere. Krillin and Tien tried their hardest to dodge, but it was difficult because of how much energy Boo had in them, destroying most of the area around them. They had revealed a little sense of fear towards Boo. They decided to use their ultimate technique that they had worked on during their many years of training. Using the engine transmission, Krillin teleported all around the place, shooting destructors all around. Boo would manage to dodge some of them, but also get cut. Chazu would also use his gigantification to grow bigger and to paralyze Boo in a much stronger sense that he couldn't even move. And then Tien, using his cloning technique, he created three clones of all surrounding Boo, and with their might, began shooting Neo Tribeams at Boo repeatedly as the attacks shaked the earth. Krillin was worried as he thought Tien was going to destroy the planet with his attacks. But once they stopped, they all showed how fatigued they were. But then they saw Boo slowly regenerating. They don't have the energy to keep attacking as they grow worried. Once Boo was fully healed, he saw them as he was completely furious, charging at them, ready to end them. But then suddenly, kicked away and sent flying into the mountains. As Krillin and Chaozu and Tien all looked over to see Yamcha, but he isn't alone. He has also brought Oob, Lily, Dandelion, and Yuri into the fight. And that's all I have written so far. The first three chapters guys let me know what y'all think thank you for the 1000 subscribers sorry for the hiatus of almost being gone for a year or not a year jeez that would have been forever a month i'm gonna be going back into the series i have left off in what if goku never stopped training if you enjoy leave a like subscribe share this with your friends let me know what y'all think about the story how y'all what do y'all think about how i how i did with all these people you know oob bringing oob in a lot early and making him the good side of boo already Lily and Dandelion being the twin daughters that Tien has. Yuri, just in case you don't know who Yuri is, Yuri is the 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 student Tien has in Super. It was like a, kind of like a little filler episode or whatever. But yeah, I brought her into it as well because you know we need more fighters. But let me know what y'all think. I think this is how, what, what, give me all some of y'all predictions because I already have. I, I thought of like how I'm gonna write the future arcs and all that. Let me know what y'all think I'm gonna do. And again, thank y'all so much for everything. Getting to 1,000 subscribers. Thank y'all enough. And we'll see y'all. In the next video. Peace.